In the previous videos, I took a minimalist approach towards classes. And while I'm making every attempt to keep things as simple as possible, there's still just a few concepts that we're going to need to cover because they're going to directly affect you as you move from C Sharp into Silverlight. So first of all, within the .NET Framework Base Class Library, all the classes are organized into namespaces. Think of a namespace as a last name for classes. So my first name is Bob, and there are literally hundreds if not thousands of Bobs in the town in which I live. So if somebody were to say, Bob likes coffee, you might ask, well, which Bob? There's like 10 million Bobs in the world. And so the re reply might come back, well, we're talking specifically about Robert Theron Tabor. So because of that unique middle name and last name, I'm guessing that there's not a lot of people in the world that have that combination maybe a couple, uh, but it's going to identify one unique person. So the same is true with classes in the .NET Framework class library, with tens of thousands of classes in the library. It's possible that a single name is shared by more than one class. However, by using the namespace of that class, it removes their ambiguity. Uh, while you might know which version of the class that you intended when you're writing the code, the C-sharp compiler comes after you, it looks your code over, tries to resolve those references and determine exactly which class you're talking about, and it's going to become confused if it can't resolve that name of the class to the namespace that it belongs to. So when the compiler is confused, it stops immediately and forces you to explain further what you meant. We call that a compilation error. So when you reference classes, you can use their entire name, including their namespace. Uh, take a look at this line of code that I have here in a new project called Understanding Namespaces. It's a very long line of code. In fact, it's so long that it doesn't even fit easily without me scrunching over the Solution Explorer in the Properties window. So we have system.io dot isolated storage dot isolated storage settings my settings equals system dot io dot isolated storage dot isolated storage settings dot application settings so this is similar to the line of code that we saw in the previous video when I was using this as an example here I'm using the entire namespace the class that we want to create a new instance of is isolated storage settings everything before that are the namespaces and you can see that they're embedded the system namespace has an IO namespace uh, child which has a isolated storage child namespace which owns the isolated storage settings we'll look at isolated storage settings in day three so please don't be concerned by what it does we're only looking at it because we're interested specifically in how it relates to the namespaces that that class belongs to. So starting out, we have system. It's a top-level namespace. In fact, many of the uh, namespaces and classes in the .NET Framework class library belong to system. The IO namespace contains namespaces that deal with in-out IO, or rather getting data into and out of the application. The isolated storage namespace further separates out those classes that deal with isolated storage, which, as you'll learn on day three, allows you to save data to the phone's flash memory. Then the isolated storage settings is the actual class name that we're trying to create an instance of. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's one really long line of code, or how in the world am I supposed to memorize all that? Well, most developers rely on using statements to shorten the amount of code that they have to write. A using statement provides access to all the namespaces and classes that belong to it so that you don't have to type all of that out. You're telling the compiler, hey, I'm using these namespaces, so before you complain, go check the namespaces first to ensure that the class that I'm referencing in my code belongs to one of them. If you don't see the class in one of those namespaces, then go ahead and complain and I'll fix the problem. So if we scroll to the very top of this mainpage.xaml.cs file, we've ignored this section of code from one, lines 1 through 12. Here are a series of using statements. Let me scroll over to the left. Notice the using statements that are added by default whenever you create a new XAML page. The new XAML page template adds these as a convenience so that you don't have to add them yourself. These are the best of the .NET Framework class library when working with 
uh, XAML documents. So that's why Microsoft gives them to you automatically by default. Some of these are used immediately, some of them not used immediately, and you'll need to uh, add others to this list. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. You can remove using statements that you know you won't need and you can add new ones to the list. There's no reason to remove them as far as the compiler is concerned. It'll compile the code the same regardless of whether or not there are extra using statements. Unused using statements are removed by the or ignored by the compiler. Some developers prefer to keep this list nice and tidy so that they know when they're looking at the code exactly what's going on. So removing unused statements helps them comprehend the code a little bit better. You can decide if that's something that you prefer to do once you get a little bit more experience under your belt. Let's comment out then recreate this long line of code that we wrote here. This time what I'm going to do is start typing the class name. Now, from experience, I may happen to know that I want to work with the isolated storage settings class in the framework class library. I may not remember which namespace it belongs to, so how am I going to solve that problem? We did this once already. Notice when I finish typing the full name of the class, that there's two things that underscore that class name. First of all, a red squiggly line, meaning that it's not recognized by Visual Studio from a compilation perspective. But then off to the very left-hand side, there is a blue underscore, which tells me that it has found a class by this name in one or more namespaces. So what I'll do now is hold down the control key on my keyboard and then hit the dot or the period key on my keyboard to open up a special little helper window that will allow me to automatically insert that using system.io.isolatedStorage namespace into the list of using statements at the very top of my code file. So I'm going to hit the return or the enter key on my keyboard with the that little using statement highlighted in the window and when I do that Notice, first of all, that isolated storage settings changes its color from black to an aqua blue color, which indicates that we're working with a class name. We talked about uh, color uh, syntax highlighting or coloring in one of the previous videos, letting us know sort of the parts of speech, uh, the nouns versus the verbs to extend that analogy, the classes versus the operators versus namespaces and so on. If I scroll up to the top, you'll see that we've added a new using statement in line 13. So Visual Studio makes it easy for you to include using statements by using that little control period trick whenever you see a blue cursor under the first letter of the class name that you typed in. So now we can finish typing this line of code. And as you can see, it's almost cut in half because we didn't have to deal with the namespaces. Okay, one last tip. Let's suppose that you're stuck and you need to search Bing to find the MSDN help article that gives you a nudge in the right direction like we talked about in the previous lesson. If you need to look for help on any given class name or method name, please add the entire namespace. Otherwise, you might be looking at the help for a version of the class that belongs to a whole other namespace. You might be getting pointed in the wrong direction as a result. All right, so hopefully that's everything you need to know for now about namespaces, uh, at least for the moment. Before we close this discussion of namespaces, let me point out three things. First, every class that you write, whether it's part of a XAML.cs file or a custom class, it'll be contained within a namespace. We've glossed over the namespace declaration in each file that we've been working with up until now, but it's always been there at the top level of the code that we write. See here in line 15, we have a namespace and then understanding namespaces. Where did this name come from? Well, you can see by default, it's going to use the name of the project as the topmost, the default, the parent namespace. 
The default namespace will be the name of your project. For simple applications, you may never need to modify or add additional namespaces. As you begin to develop more complex applications, paying attention to namespaces will come in handy. Not a topic that I really want to talk about right now. We'll talk about that in some future video way, way, way down the road. Secondly, you can set the default namespace in the project properties if you really, really need to do that. While the technique is easy, the reason, again, why you would want to do this is more advanced. So for the sake of keeping this topic simple, I'll encourage you to revisit this idea after you're more experienced in software development. The third thing that I want to say in closing is that, likewise, you can create new namespaces for your own code. Again, the technique is very simple. But the reasons why you might choose to do this are rather advanced. Again, if you set out to build a large software application, organizing your code into namespaces, just like Microsoft did with the .NET Framework class library, it'll become more important and apparent to you why you need to do that. So let's just table that discussion for some future day. But hopefully that's all you need to know about namespaces. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Mm -hmm.